Wow. So I think we need a moment to take one deep collective breath and regather ourselves. Because in the last less than an hour, we have traveled from, as a community, from celebration to confusion to guilt to deep sadness and loss. And now I'm tasked with wrapping it all up for you. So I have a confession to make. I've never actually liked Palm Sunday. I love the procession. It always makes me emotional as we move down the aisle as a community, waving our palms and singing. We experience the emotion of the day through all of our senses. The beauty of the dancers as they approach the altar, the feeling of the breeze as we wave our palms and, and sing, the sound of the music so beautifully bl blending our choir and our organ. In a significant and physical way, we gratefully and joyfully celebrate and honor our Holy Savior, calling out Hosanna in the highest. And then, in less than an hour, we are shouting, crucify him, crucify him, as we participate in his gruesome death. And then we say amen and go home. It's just a little too much for me. I want to sit in the celebration for a moment longer. I even want to sit in the pain and grief a moment longer. But we get an hour-ish, and then we move back into the world. It feels unfinished. I, I want some more. But the fact that the Christian church has been celebrating Palm Sunday liturgy since about the third century, and now we read it in conjunction with the Passion story, points to something really important. There is something in the startling and unsettling confusion and contrast of the day that's necessary for us. Our world is filled with so much tragedy and pain, senseless acts of violence, illnesses that we feel like we should be able to cure after all these years, war, loneliness, heartache, in a recent essay for the Washington Post, writer Anne Lamott takes issue with a line of a poem by poet Raina Marie Rilke. The line says, life holds you in its hands and will not let you fall. Anne Lamott, in her, in her own unique style, laments that life has actually dropped her a few times. Life can be hard. But she goes on to say that she has also been lifted on high. Along with the struggle, we cannot deny the fact that our world, our lives are filled with so much beauty and joy and love. It's bursting all around us. The coming of spring and more daylight hours, the upcoming wedding of my son in two weeks, graduations, new chapters, blooming flowers, the renewed health of a loved one. These things are all there too, and for them we are grateful. But I confess, I struggle to hold both. Too often I fear that the pain hijacks my ability to see and experience the beauty that is all around, especially when the two things are happening at the same time. As Sharon Brow says in The Amen Effect, which we've been reading recently, how do we keep from numbing in a world drowning in human suffering? Is it even possible to stay compassionate and vulnerable and healthy while holding the vastness of the pain all around us? This is why Palm Sunday and Holy Week liturgies are so important. This liturgy offers us a space to come together as a community and practice holding both deep grief and tremendous joy at the same time. The liturgy of Palm Sunday set alongside the reading of the Passion claim our eternal human condition. It offers us tools that empower us to handle this contrast and confusion of our world. This is a gift of our faith tradition, a space to practice holding conflicting emotions in tension without losing ourselves. The liturgy engages the whole of our humanity. 
It teaches us how to rightly order both our individual and communal truths. The liturgy doesn't leave us as passive onlookers. It instills in us an active understanding of the complexity of our world. How do we hold tension and joy? What do we do with these two things? As we give ourselves over to the, to the pattern of the liturgy this week, we find the ability to come in greater harmony. And we apply this lesson to the rest of our lives. This is our faith story as exhibited by Jesus on the cross. Now here's a spoiler alert. Sorry, Winnie. If you come back next Wednesday, ne sorry, next Sunday, there will be only joy and celebration. And it would be nice just to do that part every single Sunday. But it doesn't actually serve us very well. Being Christians doesn't mean that we are eternally free from suffering. Rather, it means that as we live and as we love, pain is inevitable. In our darkest times, God promises to make what seems impossible become possible. So when things seem bleak, we hold faithfully to our story. There's a famous quote by Julian of Norwich. Um, I'm sure many of you know it, recite it. Some people have it tattooed on their arms. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. It is such a hopeful and inspiring quote. But here's the thing. This is not where Julian's sentence begins. This is where it ends. Yet we rarely reference the beginning of the sentence. It begins with the phrase, sin is behovely. Sin is behovely, but all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Sin is behovely. That's a really archaic way of saying that sin is useful and necessary. Now, I'm not going to get into the minutia of my theology on sin right now, and I do think that there's some debatable points in that statement, but what I want to lift up for you today is that more than just being a quote about living a, a good life, Julian's statement reminds us that sin is inevitable in our world, which means pain and struggle are inevitable too. The palms that we waved in celebration today will be burned into the ashes that are placed on our forehead next year on Ash Wednesday. The pain and the joy are inextric inextricably intertwined. As we pray today in our liturgy, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. This is what sets us apart. When the world is drowning, when we are drowning, we understand that we are not alone. When the world is celebrating, when we are celebrating, often while we're also suffering, we know that we are not alone. Our liturgy helps us understand that we are part of a complicated and contrasting world. I invite you to ponder that and find the gift of comfort and peace in a place to practice this sometimes harsh reality as a community. Whether you participate in the services of Holy Week or you just come back next Sunday, lean into the gift of a space to practice this complicated contrast that we are called to live in our world every day. Amen.